cuentos de pasos cocida al fuego lento de los días Cascado all right so today we're well we're not really traveling but uh you know it feels like we are we're diving into this really cool project all the way in uruguay yeah uruguay it's a musical project kind of an unusual one at that um, and it really gets into this whole AI thing that, you know, everyone's talking about. It does. And how it intersects with something is, well, human is poetry. Exactly. So we're talking about the town of La Paloma right on the coast. It's got this whole history, immigration, and a really vibrant art scene, right? Yeah, totally. And in the middle of all this, you have Patacoche, a local poet. Her work is, like, soaked in the atmosphere of La Paloma. So how does this all connect to AI? Well, one of Pata's poems, Oles... It really caught the attention of a musician named Alvaro. He heard this poem, and he was like, man, I wonder what AI could do with this. I gotta be honest, when I first heard about this AI making music, it just, I don't know. Yeah, it's not the first thing you think of, right? AI and, like, you know, heartfelt art, it's kind of a weird combo. Totally. But Pata, <laughs> she was on board. She actually gave Alvaro nine of her poems. Talk about trust, right? That's huge. But here's the thing. Alvaro wasn't just like throwing these poems into some random AI music maker. Oh, so it's more nuanced than that. Oh, yeah. He was using all these different AI tools, some for composing, others for, get this, generating vocals. And he was making artistic decisions all along the way. It was very deliberate. So it was a collaboration, almost, not just AI going rogue. Exactly. He was like the director, you know, guiding the AI, shaping yeah. the sound to match Pata's words. That is so wild. So what did Pata think when she finally heard it? She said it was like, both familiar and totally new, like rediscovering her own work. Imagine that, AI sparking human creativity. It even got her writing more poetry. Wow, that's really something. It kind of throws that whole AI replacing artist thing out the window, huh? More like AI as a partner, maybe. Yeah, it really makes you think about what art even is these days, where the line is between human and machine. But honestly, it goes beyond just art, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. What happens when AI can make music as good as human musicians? What does that mean for jobs, for the whole industry? You know, it's a big question a lot of people are asking, and not just in music, it's drivers. It's, well, it feels like every job is wondering if a robot's going to take over. For sure. But here's the thing about Panacata and Alvaro. They don't shy away from those tough questions. Mm. They're realistic about the potential downsides, but they're also, like, really psyched about the creative possibilities. It really is kind of this mix of, whoa, this is cool, and then also, hmm, where's this all going, you know? Yeah. Definitely. But before we go too far down that rabbit hole, I, I gotta know, what's the music actually like? Wow, well, man, it's something else. The album's called Templo Oceanico, which, I mean, right there. It's evocative, right? Totally. It conjures up this whole vibe. Imagine you're standing on the coast of La Paloma. The ear's got that salty tang. Waves are crashing. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Wow, so it's not just some generic AI music then? No way. Yeah. Each track is like its own little journey but all within this bigger soundscape, this ocean of sound. I love that. So Alvaro really used Pata's poems as like the foundation for it all. Absolutely. You can hear it, especially in the rhythms. Some parts have this driving beat, almost like surf rock, which, you know, makes sense given the whole seaside thing. But then it'll shift and it's these beautiful kind of haunting melodies, like looking out at the ocean at night, you know? Yeah, I totally get that. It's incredible to think those moods, those sounds came from poetry through AI. What about the singing, though? Uh, that's the other wild part. The voice on Templo Oceanico, it belongs to Paloma Ram. Okay, but like a real singer, right? Because honestly, when I first heard this album... You had no idea it was AI. Yeah, most people don't. It's so realistic. The tech has gotten insane, right? Those AI singers can do all the little things. The breaths, the subtle changes in tone. Mm -hmm. It's uncanny. It kind of freaks me out a little, to be honest. Like, we connect with voices in music so strongly. It's such a human thing. But then this AI voice comes along, and it's like, wait, what's real anymore, you know? I get it. It blurs the lines. Yeah. It makes you question what music is even supposed to be, Yeah. how we connect with it, with the artist, even if that artist isn't even, well, human. Right. It's like Alvaro and Pata have opened this door to a whole new way of making art, and we're all just peeking in, trying to figure it out. Exactly. And it's not just the art itself, right? It's like, what does this mean for musicians, for songwriters, producers? If AI can make music this good, where does that leave them? It's the big question, isn't it? Not just in music either. It seems like every industry is worried about AI taking over jobs these days. Yeah. And it's understandable, right? It's yeah. unnerving. But we have to remember, 
This isn't the first time tech has shaken things up. Look at photography. People thought it'd kill painting, but it just pushed artists to do new things. It's like every time we take a leap forward with tech, we find new ways to be creative, to be human even. 100%. And Temple Oceanico, it shows that. At its core, it's about humans and tech working together, not one replacing the other. And it's about this connection to a place, to La Paloma, which is really cool. It is. It makes you realize AI isn't just this abstract thing. It can be used to tell stories, to capture the feeling of a place, all these human experiences. It really makes you think, you know, like, where does it all go from here? What's next for music, for art, for, I don't know, everything? Right. It's the big question, and I don't think anyone has a crystal ball for this one. It's exciting, for sure, but also a little, I don't know, overwhelming. Like, how do we even wrap our heads around all this AI stuff? I hear yeah. It's a lot to process. Honestly, I think the most important thing is to, like, not freak out. Yeah, easier said than done, right? When it feels like the rules are changing every five minutes. Totally. But we've been here before, right? New tech comes along, throws everyone for a loop. Think about photography. People were convinced it was the end of painting. And look what happened. Painters just found new ways to do their thing. Exactly. And I think that's what we'll see with AI, too. Yeah, it'll change things, but it'll also push us to be even more creative, more human, in a way. And this album, Temple Oceanico, it kind of embodies that, doesn't it? 100%. It's like this beautiful example of what can happen when we don't just fear the tech, but we, you know, embrace the possibilities, collaborate with it. Speaking of which, I bet our listeners are dying to hear this music. How can they check it out? It's on all the usual platforms, so give it a listen. And when you do, really listen. Put on some headphones, close your eyes, and let it wash over you. What do you hear? What does it make you feel? Yeah, this isn't exactly background music. It's an experience. Exactly. And then... Talk about it. Share it with your friends. Get those conversations going. What does it mean to make music in the age of AI? What is art, even? There are no easy answers here. And that's kind of the beauty of it all, right? We're all figuring this out together. So to our listeners, dive into Templo Oceanico, see what you think. And until next time, keep exploring, keep asking those big questions, and keep creating. <laughs>